we have a major misunderstanding with regard to what charisma is. We have a tendency to think of people as either charismatic or not charismatic. We look at a person and say their personality, all the dimensions of their personality combined makes them a very magnetic person, a charismatic person, a person that others listen to that has the ability to connect with others in this kind of supernatural way. That really goes all the way back to the great man theories that your book talks about at the very beginning of uh, chapter five on leadership. And it may be true that there are people who just uh, by chance and uh, conditioning in their young life develop uh, outspokenness and um, you know a charisma that you see even very young. I think of like Michael Jackson. I saw a little show on him and I, I had forgotten that Michael Jackson was in the Jackson 5. I was, it was blew me away to watch his talent and his confidence in dancing and singing and everything. And that was of course during my, my lifetime, my generation, quite a exceptional individual and there's lots of them like that, examples. But you see sometimes even in children it emerging very early and it, and, and it persists all the way into their adult lifehood and you think, well, they were born that way. Well, Michael Jackson wasn't really born with all the talents. He developed them and acquired them, including his ability to connect with an audience of people to uh, be have his, uh, his ear to the heartbeat of the country and what music would be accepted and how much he could push things. If you think about what he did with uh, Thriller and uh, there were there were big risks that he took. They were unheard of, never seen before type of steps that he took. How did he accomplish so much? Well, for sure, he had a, a large degree of uh, personal charisma, and that showed up early in his life. But I think we get confused and think that you either have it or you don't. And my experience as a as a teacher has has really revealed to me the truth in that. I started teaching way back in 1998 or so. And I remember the first time I stood in front of a class of 70 people, I attributed malice to those little bastards. Sorry. <laughs> they just sat there and stared at me, paying attention to every word I said. I couldn't believe it. And it was horrible and horrifying. And I thought to myself, if I have signed up, for a career standing in front of people where I'm going to blush and feel heat stroke and get it like a rash up to my neck and uh, this is horrible. I'm going to have to change something about this and I don't know that I'm going to change them. They're actually doing what they're expected to do which is sit still and be quiet and pay attention and look at me. But it was a terrible cycle for me and I needed to figure a way to overcome it. I didn't have any presence or charisma. I didn't know how to do that or if I could, but I had to in order to get students to pay attention to me. And so I learned some things and I want to share those with you. These have a lot to do with public speaking, but I think they also apply just in the way that you engage with people, even on a one-to-one -one basis. If you're interested in charisma, you can Google it and there's no end to the extent to which you can study this and watch videos and so forth and be inspired and be instructed more than I'll be able to do in this video because I have a limit on time, obviously. So here's a couple of things. Uh, I used to stand in front of people and if, if and when I would forget what I was going to say, which is inevitable, I would feel like they see that I've forgotten what I said and they are feeling sorry for me or they're feeling critical toward me. And I struggled with that so long until I finally sat down in an audience in front of someone else speaking and I watched very carefully and I watched how they forgot what they were going to say or they misspoke something or they said something completely wrong and they had to backtrack or someone asked a question and they didn't know an answer in front of everyone and I realized that sometimes it was painful for them and I thought there's no need for it to be painful we don't care and we don't know everything either and more than anything, when I watch someone who's standing in front of others or engaged in the leadership uh, process and trying to be charismatic, if to the extent to which they might seem like they're failing, I really respect the attempt that they're making. After all, I realize I'm sitting in the audience and they're standing in front of me. So they've done something to get there. They're in some sense maybe further on than I am. And I 
grant a lot of grace. Moreover, I quite frankly realize that most of the time, most of the people are not listening very intensely. They're distracted. By the time that I've made a video that's more than four minutes for you, you're losing your attention. I have to get your attention again because you're falling asleep. I know that. So if I say something wrong, it's not like everyone is, ah, you know, get a screenshot. He said something wrong or he forgot what he was going to say. See, I forgot what I was going to say. What am I going to do about it? I'm going to move on. I'm not going to care so much about it because the reality is you don't care so much about it. It's not that big a deal. I can't be stopped by those kind of incidents. I recognize that to get people's attention and hold it, I have to change the tempo and the beat and the cadence and the tone of my voice. If I talk monotone all the time, you will fall asleep. So I have to do my best. And we can grow in these skills. I'm a prime example right this very minute of growing in these skills. For the last 12 years, I have worked intensely, exclusively, on standing in front of hundreds of students with a microphone and the cameras and doing my thing in that environment, getting good at emotionally being okay with that. And now I have to learn how to get okay with emotionally being with a light box and my computer monitors and my stupid phone in front of me looking at my ugly face. This is a whole nother thing. And, I've had, and I'm having to work hard to develop those skills. And I don't know how long I'll come, how far along I'll come, and when it will happen. But it's exciting to see little changes. I still can't record with my wife in the house. No one can be here. I can't have them hearing it. It makes me too self-conscious. But I'm growing in that regard. And I can do it. I can learn this new uh, platform and adapt to it. Because I'm an adaptive human being. And so are you. So if you're scared of talking in front of people and you have that anxiety, you need to just face it. You need to put yourself in those situations and you will grow over time. But you can't be scared of the failures. Well, you can be scared of them, but you can't be so scared of the failures that you won't try. Because that's the one thing that can guarantee that you don't make progress in your own skill set in becoming more charismatic in a group setting is if you never try. You have to try. And you will inevitably fail. I've failed maybe more than I've succeeded. I, I, I never know. I just do my best and keep pushing forward. You have to vary the volume and tempo some. Now, don't be too weird about it. I'm going to be a little weird just to exemplify it. But I'm going to show you how I make get people's attention. Because I know that if they're not paying attention, they're not learning. And if they're not learning, we might as well close our books and go the heck home. Because... That's the whole point of this. So sometimes I'll begin to raise my energy. I'll use my hands. And if you were here in the audience, I would walk around. I often touch someone on the shoulder or just stand next to them. And I know that the, the, the eyes of everyone are kind of over near me because I'm speaking and the person I'm standing next to. And maybe I'll, I'll say, what do you think to that person? I, it, it, it stimulates them. It wakes them up. And I've learned these kinds of skills to just get the classroom sort of energized and you know as well as I do if I walk next to someone and sort of say what do you think and I'm grace graceful I walk away if they don't know or whatever and then I walk to the other side of the room you're thinking oh he might ask me you start paying more attention that's just a simple little trick I vary my tempo I start talking faster sometimes and other times or if I want to be more dramatic I make an effort to slow down my speech I make eye contact with maybe one or two people, then I move it to another one or two people. I'm deliberate about it. I'm slow about it. I'm engaged with specific people. I back up to the whole class, talk to the whole class, focus in on someone because it's movement and energy. I make noises. Sometimes I just make a loud noise and people pay attention. Sometimes I do something silly. It, there used to be a flag in uh, 107 where I would teach, and sometimes I would go behind the flag and pull it around me, and then pull. So, and it got a little laugh. It's just me being stupid. Why? Because we need a little break. We need a little levity. We need a little humor. And I'd rather you laugh at me, even than with me, if it's laughter. Because if you're laughing, you're breathing. And if you're breathing, I know you're conscious. If your eyes are open and you're breathing, you might be paying attention. So laughter is good. 
it serves my purpose. And if you're laughing at me, that's totally fine. I'll be a complete fool for people if it accomplishes what I need. Now I'm going to make the loudest sound. I need you to turn up your volume, but don't, I don't want you to blow your speakers. I want to make the loudest sound that can possibly come through my microphone. Well, I guess this is my microphone to you. I want you to prepare yourself. Are you ready? Go. You may never have known how loud silence is. But it's the loudest sound you can make in a room. Once you have the attention of people, if you turn down the volume, people will tend to lean into it. They also know that there's been a disruption in the cadence and the volume of your speech, and they wonder what that means, because it's a departure from the maybe rather monotone dialogue that you've been delivering and they'll lean in. If you were watching this video and I was talking monotone and all of a sudden I stopped, you might look at your monitor just because you wonder, is it still playing? What's going on? It catches your attention. Now if you take these type of techniques and string them together in some kind of a thoughtful way, you have someone who's engaged in what is really rather charismatic behavior. You don't have to be a certain kind of person to be charismatic. You don't have to be like Martin Luther King, who was a brilliant orator. You don't have to be like anyone that you know that you think exemplifies charisma, be yourself. If you're this weird, geeky person, you can be hugely charismatic. Think about YouTube or something. Some of these characters that we like, I like this guy who does uh, snake oil, if you Google that. He curses like crazy, so I don't really recommend, I guess, but he's the F-bomb constantly. He's got a good message about fasting and so forth, but he's just a real character he's got a strong charismatic persona and that's in a gregarious way but i like others who are quiet and calm i listen to you know various thought leaders in theology or philosophy or stuff like that who who don't who don't use the f-bomb and they don't raise their voice and they're not running around they're not high energy they're intellectual thinkers so i want this to be encouraging to you we all need to develop our repertoire in what it means to be charismatic. And every one of us is so different. Last thing on our plate here I want to just mention. There's two elements to charisma. There's the charisma of your presence. You know, your hand gestures and uh, your eye contact, your voice inflection and tonality, the tempo with which you're speaking and how you change that throughout, you know, your, your talking to people. And there's another element, and that is, so that's how you say things. And then there's what you say, the content of your words. People are most compelled to see you as effective leader and charismatic by your presentation. That's why politicians who are saying nothing, basically, don't answer a reporter's questions, but they say, well, I'd like to, that's a good point, and I'd like to comment on this and that, and they just avoid the question altogether, they're, they're very charismatic in how they're carrying themselves. And in doing so, people say that's a, a competent person, even though what they say is hardly charismatic at all. Then there's the charismatic content. If you look at the I Have a Dream speech, it's in your book by Martin Luther King, you see that uh, there's a cadence to it and a repetition, I have a dream. It's hard for me to even read that speech and not feel filled with something emotionally because the words itself are so powerful. Now when you take that speech and you put it out of the mouth of Martin Luther King, you say, oh my gosh. Then when you realize the man, the message, and the time in our country and what that message meant to us, it's kind of overwhelming. And that doesn't happen that often in this world where you have the right message at the right time and you're the right person to say it in the right way but it's what we should be striving for. When you engage in dialogue with people that you work with and you're trying to be charismatic, you don't need to be a manager to do this, just a, just a person wanting to influence others in a good, positive way. When you say things like I, you diminish the collective charismatic feel. When you say we, you include people. You wanna share your vision with others. You want them to buy into it as their own vision and you don't do that by saying this is my idea and you should follow me 
You do it by saying, this is what I see for the future. I want to help you see some of it. I want you to agree with me. And if you don't, I want you to help me to understand what you don't agree to, what you don't see as the future. Being charismatic is a very individualized process. And I hope that every one of you has an entire full belief that you can grow as a person. I'm living proof of it. I'm not the most charismatic person in the world and may come across very uncharismatic in these videos for sure. But I'm telling you that I've seen significant and dramatic change in myself over the years and everyone that I know personally who is charismatic to some extent. As I've talked with them, they've said they've gained those skills over time. They've worked to develop those skills. The payoffs are magnificent, not only with accolades, recognition, and pay, and opportunity, but personally to be able to have a greater impact in influencing how people think about things in the workplace and in your life. It's a very wonderful, powerful uh, responsibility that we have. Hope that's helpful.